Mike, how are you, man? I'm doing real well, guys. Thanks for having me on. Thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, tell us about the trip to Mexico. What was your standout moment of the trip? Well, certainly the game. Um, we weren't in Mexico very long, but we were in Colorado for the for the week, prepping for all the altitude and all that kind of stuff. But uh, the game experience itself was just outstanding. It was um, it was a really special special thing for our group to do um, from the national anthem of, of Mexico and, and seeing Alfredo Gutierrez, a, a teammate of ours, get emotional and 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 have have his first game on on his home soil um, to obviously the result of the game we had we had a good plan we executed well um had a lot of potential distractions all week long but our guys you know zeroed in and and uh and and did what we needed to do and came out with a great one against arizona look it was as an impressive win as i think we've seen in the kyle shanahan era and you guys get a lot of credit for doing that obviously before we get into the meat and potatoes of the game though did spending a few days in Colorado actually help prepare you for attitude? Yes, uh, altitude. Y yes or no? I think so. I, I I certainly didn't feel tired out there. Um, I think um, you know, even if it's a one percent, even if it's a two percent, that's the kind of thing our ownership group's willing to do for us and 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 get us prepared and give us the best chance to win. And so um, I think it, it did. At the end of the day, you know, we we had a strong second half and our defense you know, came out and shut him out in the second half and we we poured on the point. So uh if we have if if you're going off of late game success, then I think it worked perfect. Mike, I know you said it was a quick trip and obviously it was a business trip because you definitely did take care of business. The whole team did. But please tell us you got a chance to try some real Mexican food while you were in Me in Mexico City. Did you get to try anything while you were out there? Uh, they had a nice taco bar lined up for us when we got to the hotel on uh, Sunday night. But other than that, we did not uh, venture out of the hotel or, or do any of that. So um, unfortunately, did not get to experience a lot all that Mexico City has to offer. But the taco bar that we had uh, at the hotel was, was pretty pretty fire. Did anybody have more fun than Kittle? It looked like George Kittle officially leads the team and had the most amount of fun possible. I I don't know. I think I had a lot of fun. I um I think George definitely came on strong and um finally got, you know, a couple of the receiving productions that that he's I know he's been wanting and 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 working for and um so that's definitely great to get him back involved and 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 not that he wasn't before, but you know, he, George's job encompasses just about everything football can throw at you. And I know everybody uh loves catching touchdowns and so to get that monkey off his back, I know was a big deal for him and um He's, a, he's such a great player. He plays with such passion for the game, and um, and it certainly showed on, on Monday night. And how, how could you not have fun with the way that we were playing? Mike McGlinchey of the 49ers here on 95-7 the game. So it feels like, it looks like a different team since Christian McCaffrey started putting the uniform on. Does it feel like a different team to you right now as well? Um, I don't know if it feels like a dif different team um, because we do have a lot of the same pieces that have been here and gone through it with all of us over the last five or uh, you know five, four or five years or so. Um, but he's definitely a great piece to add. I mean, what a what an incredibly special football player. Um, he does a lot of things for us, and uh, and he's going to continue to do a lot of things for us. And it just adds that one more piece um, that we can use in 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 the pass game and in the run game and. Um, He's, he's, he's certainly helping our football team achieve new heights. Um, and, you know, when you have five eligible guys on the, on the field at the same time that are, that are all capable of breaking a touchdown at any moment, um, that certainly provides a, a lot of problems for a defense. Mike, it seemed like the whole game, the whole experience was so directed towards the Niners. The fan base, I mean, it looked like a home game out there with all the fans you had. Then once you got into the actual game, and how obviously the Cardinals had Colt McCoy, and we, we don't know what's going on with that team. A lot of people were talking after the game that obviously weren't in it like you were, talking about how you, it seems like the Niners broke the Cardinals' spirit. There were some business decisions being made on certain plays, specifically that George Kittle run. Was there a moment on the sideline or a moment during the game where the team looked at each other and you just think, let's finish these guys. It's clear they do not want to be here. I don't know if we ever talked about them not wanting to be here, but we certainly see the opportunity arise to close the game out when we did. Um, you know, when you get the, when you get the, we, we talk about it all the time. When you get the ball to start the second half and you have the lead going and you score points at the end of the first half, 
it's an opportunity to lap the defense and lap the, t- lap the other team. And you, and you, you create two back to back possessions in one. And when we go down and score on the first drive and you can kind of taste blood in the water, you know that on the next drive, if you can really put things together, it's a great opportunity to take t- total control of the game. And so I think it's just a situational awareness of, of, of an opportunity to take over a game and, and, and feeling the, the momentum that we had going into that. Um, but in terms of, I, I think there's too many good players on the Cardinals team and too many strong veterans um, that would ever, you know, not want to be there. Um, they're certainly a prideful group and they play hard. And, you know, we just had a great night. Mike McGlinchey here on 95.7 The Game. So there was a lot of talk, Mike, about Trent Williams before the game it, leading up to it and, you know, all the, the football nerds that are trying to break down, uh, you know, game film and tendencies are saying that he he might be tipping whether it's pass pro or run protection. Is there anything to that? I know he was dismissive of it. Or is he so good, like, he can just kind of get away with it? Is it something that ever has been talked about internally, shall we say? Um, I don't think it's a big issue. Obviously, we're coached, you know, on on certain things to have a different stance. But at the end of the day, you just got to get your job done. And and, um, I think if you zero in on one player the entire game, I think anybody will find tendencies, you know, throughout the game. And if you want, but there's 22 other guys out on the field. So I don't know if a defensive back or anybody's like tipping a stance for the left tackle. Um, you'd have to ask them. But I think, you know, it's something that we work on. We try to be balanced. We try to be in a balanced stance. We try to do things, you know, on first and second down that are a little different than most people in the way that we run the football and how hard we have to run a- a- across the ball is more so than I think any team in the league does. And so when you do that, you kind of get a little bit, you know, Try power happy and trying to get out as best as you can and whatever that is. I mean, first and second down, you're in a balanced stance. So at the end of the day, if it's third and three plus in the NFL, it's, it's a pass and everybody in the stadium knows it's a pass. So you got to do whatever you can to get, to get your job done and block the guy in front of you. Um, and like you said, at the end of the day, even if you know it's coming with Trent, you still got to try and beat him. And I don't think uh, many guys in the league that, that can do that. Uh, has any coach at any level had to uh, do a little correction with you, Mike. Were you, were, were you ever accused of tipping your pitches in any way? Uh, do you have a tell that you work on making sure you don't tell? Well, I think certainly, I mean, you, you, you go back and evaluate every single thing about your game after every, after every week, right? I think um, and first and foremost, the back to basics is something that I've always worked on, and, and your stance as an offensive lineman um, is everything um, to what you do. It's the ability to get out in the pass play or get out in a run play and, and be able to go both sides, backwards, forwards, whatever you need to do. So you got, it's very hard to find that balance. And, and um, certainly there's things that you have to work on, but yeah, you're tweaking your stance or tweaking something just about every week. I don't know if anybody specific, specifically told me, you know, Hey, you're tipping your, your run or your pass. That's never really happened, but um, there's certain rules with certain plays that you, um, you know, in certain situations that you have to operate in a, in a stance that, Sometimes you're not as comfortable with, so you got to keep working it, smoothing it out, and doing what you can to, to get your guy blocked. Mike, during training camp, there were a lot of question marks about the offensive line. People said, you were young, you'll continue to get better, you'll continue to gel, and that was the hope. But did you, did the team, did you ever see this coming? I mean, you're not giving up sacks. Everybody is playing so well. Obviously, you wanted to improve and, and knew that there was a ceiling you could reach. But did anybody see this coming with how well the offensive line is playing? I think we certainly did in, in, in our own building. Um, you know, obviously, the question mark was that we had three new starters on the inside. But the people outside of this building didn't see the way that those guys play or work every single day. Um, Aaron Banks has stepped up in a huge way and playing his absolute butt off for us. And, and Jake Brendel has done an unbelievable job of keeping us all together at the, at the center position and making some outstanding blocks himself. And then Spencer Burford, you know, he's, he's done a great job coming in and competing his butt off and, 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 and learning as, as, as the year's gone on. And it's tough as a rookie, you know, it's, uh, I, I was in his position once of getting thrown in as a starter and, and, having the world kind of spin as, as fast as you've ever felt it. And um, and he's done that because of how talented he is, one, but how much of a competitor he is and he, how prideful he is in getting his job done. And um, you could see right from when he walked into the building that this kid was going to be something that we could work with and be special. 
Um, and, and obviously having Dan uh, Brunskill be, you know, kind of our utility man to do anything we need him to do. Um, we knew we were going to be a strong group. And, um, you know, we, uh, we, we've had some success, We've but, you know, it's not all roses. You know, you, you have a lot of things we all need to continue to improve on in order to, to make this work and achieve our goal of a Super Bowl. And um, certainly we haven't figured out everything yet here in week 12 but we're but the climb the climb is what's most important and and we've certainly been doing that each week starting right tackle for the 49ers mike mcglinchy here on 95 7 the game damon bruce and alan styles with you here on a wednesday afternoon so not that jimmy garoppolo has ever lacked confidence but it looks like he has found a level of confidence, a level of comfort. I'm guessing all quarterbacks become more comfortable when they got nice, clean pockets, which you're giving them. But are you sensing a, a different Jimmy Garoppolo? Is this a, uh, a Jimmy on a revenge mission? Is it a more at peace and more zen Jimmy? Jimmy 2.0? Or is it just Jimmy is Jimmy is Jimmy is Jimmy? I think it's the second one. I think Jimmy's strongest trait um, and especially as a leader, but certainly as a quarterback, is that he's the same guy every single day in any situation. Um, you know exactly what you're going to get from him. He's, he's, you know, for all the crap that's been thrown at him over the last four or five years, and whatever anybody has wanted to say about him, the only thing the guy does is show up and win games. And he's been doing that since he's been here. He's been doing that with all class and with, with grace and with a competitive spirit that's unmatched. And all Jimmy wants to do is show up, win football games. He doesn't care that he's not the guy that's, you know, loved throughout the media. He's not the quarterback that's the darling that is, you know, potentially MVP. Can't whatever whatever anybody wants to say about a quarterback. Um, Jimmy has been unbelievable, and to watch him as a teammate go through this, and then still show up and deliver each and every week, and try and continually try to get better, um, is certainly his best quality, and and. Um, no, nobody in our building ever questioned how good he was. It was, um, I don't understand why he gets so much crap on the outside world. Um, because all he does, like I said, all he does is show up and win. And, um, and he's so, he's such a fun teammate to play with. And, uh, it's certainly an admirable quality that I hope a lot of young athletes around the country are, are, are looking up to because it's a hard world out there, especially with how exposed everyone is with media, social media, criticisms and everything. The only thing he's done is stay the course and get better. And um, we're certainly reaping the rewards of that right now. Does the revamped offense now with Christian McCaffrey, with this peak Garoppolo that we're seeing, does it feel to you that Kyle Shanahan is now more comfortable to be more aggressive with the play calls that he sends into the huddle? Because it looks like... You know, you guys now have the skeleton key in Christian McCaffrey to unlock opportunities for guys to get loose all over the field. Does it feel looser now that that Kyle has you know the the, the offense that he he absolutely wanted to have? I don't think it feels any different, to be honest with you. I think because we've had great backs here, we've had play, people that can play, we've had people that are, are are capable of doing a lot of different things. I think. Kyle's always been aggressive. There isn't ever a time that I've played for him that he has not been an aggressive head coach or play caller or however you want to see it. Um, certainly the players that we have right now are, 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 you know, are very flashy and very good, but they're, but they're just teammates and they're good players and they're unselfish. And so you saw us against Arizona have everybody get involved. And I think that's what it is. It's the balance, the, the, the ability to have the balance of every single skill position um, being able to create and make plays no matter the opportunity and, and, and Kyle has always been the best at finding the matchup that works best no matter, and every single down the distance and at every play so I don't think it's anything that's changed within him I don't think it's anything that's changed within our offense I think it's just guys understanding how we can get better and guys taking the opportunity that they have and running with it Mike, this season has some of the craziest parody we've seen in the NFL. It seems like the last couple of years, specifically in the NFC. Earlier in the season when the team you know, dropped some games you probably felt you could have had, was it nice to look up at the score when you were done, look at the different scoreboards and see, oh, wow, none of these teams have figured it out yet? Or did you still just look at those games as missed opportunities? Certainly as missed opportunities. Um, you know, I, but at the same time, everybody, you know, 
on the outside world likes to look at jump either we're winning the Super Bowl or we're the worst team in the NFL after every win and loss. And so certainly um, the polarity of, of in which people react to wins and losses in this in this league um, certainly has an effect on the outside world. But in terms of us, we knew, and it's the same as last year. You know, you're you're in a position where there's 17 weeks in this season, and you have no idea who you are or what you're going to become until the nitty gritty parts that show up. And um, you know, all we knew is that no matter what, the grind is to get better. The grind is to improve week to week. The grind is to continue to put ourselves in a position that when it comes time to play great football in November and, and December and, and a playoff run, that's where you're getting your best stuff out. And and so I think that's where we're, that's the trajectory we've been on and it's the trajectory we're going to stay on um, because you can't go up and down week to week the way that um, people like to react. You just got to stay the course and, and, and play as good ball as you can. USC, Notre Dame, are there any bets on the table with Drake Jackson or Hufunga? Yeah, there's a couple friendly wagers, I think. I don't think any of us are, uh, we don't we don't scratch the gambling itch too hard in there, but it's certainly a pride thing. Um, it's our, uh, it's it's one of the most, it's, a, it's an intense rivalry, one of the most historic and longest ones in all of college football. It's something that we, we all take a lot of pride in. Um, I know Aaron and I, Aaron Banks and I, you know, love to support our, our, our blue and gold as much as anybody in the locker room. And, and certainly, um, SC is on a, is on a mission this year, um, to win the Pac-12 and potentially get into a playoff spot. So, um, there's a lot riding on this game this week. I think it's an, it's exciting to have that jacked into our, our matchup again for the first time in a while. Um, and, um, it's, it's, it's definitely going to be uh, a lot of, a lot of smack talk back and forth between the Trojans and the Irish this week. Well, we know who Jed's absolutely pulling for. The owner of the 49ers is, uh, definitely going go Irish all weekend long. Uh, we've got Thanksgiving tomorrow. Uh, this show doesn't have many traditions. We're about to get into one of our traditions. It's the Thanksgiving show side dish draft. You get the number one overall pick, Mike McGlinchey. The number one overall pick, Thanksgiving side dish draft. You select who? Has to be stuffing. Stuffing is something. I, I I would agree. You you definitely. Mel Kiper is just nodding in agreement somewhere. You got that one right. Uh, our friends at Harris Ranch Beef Mike are going to send you ten pounds of prime steaks, and you get to choose your own adventure. Do you want the ribeyes, the porterhouse, or the New York strips? Whew. That's a tough one to be. That's the hardest question you guys have hit me with all day. <laughs> uh, I'll take the ribeyes. That is also the correct answer, if you don't mind me saying. Mike, it was great to talk to you. Thank you for joining us. Good luck coming this weekend against the New Orleans Saints. Good luck to your Irish. Our producer is saying fight on over here, so uh, we'll just ignore him the rest of the way. But we really appreciate you joining us today. Thanks very much, and happy Thanksgiving. Same to you guys. Thank you very much.